A lot of times when I'm talking to my patients about an anterior cervical discectomy infusion because they have a pinched nerve in the neck, they ask me some very good questions. And one of the best questions, which I have to answer a lot, is if I have this surgery, what are the chances that the disc above or below my fusion is going to degenerate? I think that's a great thing to discuss. So I thought I'd make a quick video about it. The anterior cervical discectomy infusion, very briefly, is a surgery where we remove a disc in the neck, we unpinch a nerve, and then we stabilize it by putting a plate and a bone graft. I have a pretty good video about it. I'm going to put the link in the description below. When you have an ACDF surgery, you stop one disc from moving. That is the purpose of the fusion. You should think of a fusion as a stabilization surgery. But the question is, what happens to the disc above or below? Is that going to degenerate later on? Studies have shown that you have a one-level anterior cervical discectomy infusion surgery. Within the next 10 years, there's approximately 25% chance of a disc above or below degenerating and causing some nerve symptoms or neck pain or radiculopathy. On the other hand, if you have a two-level ACDF, the chances of the disc above or below degenerating drop to about 10 to 15%. In the third scenario, if you have a three-level ACDF, the chances of a disc above and below the fusion degenerating within the next 10 years and causing problems are about 5%. So this sounds pretty counterintuitive. Why should a one-level fusion cause more adjacent segment degeneration compared to a two-level fusion? And why should a two-level ACDF cause more adjacent segment degeneration and disease compared to a three-level ACDF? The answer is very interesting, and this is why this happens. If you look at the most commonly degenerated disc in the neck, which causes pinched nerves or compression of the spinal cord, the C5-6 is by far the most common disc that needs to be decompressed and fused. So the C5-6 ACDF is the most common disc that causes these problems. The second most common disc is the C6-7, and this is closely followed by C4-5 disc. So it makes a lot of sense because if you do a one-level ACDF, for example, at C5-6, now you're putting pressure on the disc above at C4-5 and below at C6-7. But if you do a two-level ACDF, for example, C5-6 and C6-7, now you only have one disc left to worry about. But if you do a three-level ACDF, well, you've eliminated all three discs, which are the most likely to degenerate. What is interesting is that the C7-T1 and the C3-4 discs, they don't degenerate very frequently. And finally, the C2-3 disc degenerates very, very rarely. A lot of patients ask me, well, what happens if I get a disc replacement? Will my adjacent segment degeneration uh, rate be any different? The answer to that question is that according to the studies available, the rate of adjacent segment degeneration after a one-level disc replacement really is not that much different compared to a one-level ACDF. What's even more interesting is that if you look at a non-fusion surgery, for example, the posterior cervical foraminotomy, where we make a small incision in the back of the neck, and we just remove a tiny piece of bone to unpinch the nerve in the back of the neck. We don't fuse the spine. There's no plates, there's no rods. The rate of adjacent segment degeneration actually is the same compared to a one-level ACDF. So we don't really understand why that is the case. The rate of adjacent segment degeneration is largely a biological or genetic phenomenon, and there's really not a whole lot you can do about it. There are certain situations where the rate of adjacent segment degeneration is significantly increased, for example, in smokers. So if you have an ACDF surgery and you've recovered from it and everything is great, but if you're still smoking afterwards, your rate of adjacent segment degeneration is gonna be much higher compared to if you were a non-smoker. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and see you next time.